Now that we've entered all of our setup information and established analysis parameters, let's examine the calculated data, look at some quality control plots, and of course export the final results. As soon as we're ready to analyze, we simply go over here and hit Perform Analysis. Let's click on the tab labeled CT Data since this lists all of the imported data well by well. The first column is the name of the real-time study file for each data point. Since I imported a single study file, the name is the same all the way down. I'll just shrink this column a little bit. The next few columns contain each sample's original well designation on the real-time plate, the assay name in that well, assay type, sample name, the biological grouping we assigned, the CT for each sample, and adjusted CT. These last values would change only if, back here, we'd chosen to include maximum CT values in the calculation and one or more samples happen to have a higher CT than the value we set. So, if I set 35 as my maximum and a particular sample had a CT of 39, its adjusted value would be 35. But since I chose not to include maximum CT values, none of mine changed. Now, provided we told it to do so in the analysis settings section and that we ran three or more replicates for each sample, the first thing Data Assist does is to eliminate any technical replicates that don't meet the precision standards of a modified Grubbs test. It appears that we have a few individual wells that were omitted, and you can also see where we manually omitted gap DH. In the lower section, the various delta delta CT calculations are broken down. The first column presents the average CT for each gene sample pair, along with the standard deviation of the pipetting replicates. So far, no statistics have been performed on biological replicates. The next column over, Delta CT, normalizes that average target gene CT to what's generically called a normalization factor. Here's what that means. Depending on the specific analysis settings, the target data is normalized in one of three ways to a single gene, such as beta-actin, that's what we did in our example by designating actin as our only control gene, to the geometric mean of multiple genes designated as controls, or to the global median CT, something it would have done had we chosen global normalization. The next column over converts these logarithmic average delta CT values to linear values, by applying the formula 2 to the negative delta CT. For people who have done delta delta CT calculations before, you'll note that this log to linear conversion generally happens last, after a second subtraction, to get delta delta CT values. Data Assist performs these last two steps in reverse, but no matter, the final values come out the same. Now you can see that our data are still broken down into individual biological replicates under the 2 to the delta CT column. That all changes in the next column, full change, otherwise known as relative quantity. Now before we look there, let's see how the calculation works. For simplicity's sake, pretend we're looking at a single target gene in two biological groups, untreated and treated, with three samples per group. And say Data Assist calculated the 2 to the negative delta CT values for each biological replicate as follows. Here's how it then converts these values to full changes. First, the biological replicates are averaged for each group, like this. Next, the user chooses a reference sample, and actually you might recall that the user does this when he or she changes the analysis settings. We'll say that the untreated is our reference group. Data Assist then takes the reference value and divides it by itself such that it has a final value of 1. Finally, Data Assist divides each other sample's value by the reference value. And that's how the software generates fold changes. In this example, the expression of gene X went up approximately 60% when we treated our samples. Let's go back to our actual example. Under the Full Change tab, we can see that Data Assist has performed these same calculations for each target gene and on each biological group. It's also calculated p-values based on a one-tailed t-test for significance. 
Now, if you decide to change any settings at this point, such as which group, brain or heart, is the reference, just make the desired change and hit Perform Analysis. Let's have a quick look at the many quality control and results plots that Data Assist generates. The first QC graphic is the box plot, which maps out the range of CTs for each sample. The different colors represent our two groupings, while the boxes themselves cover the middle 50% of CT values. The black lines inside the boxes are the median CTs, while the circles are the mean CTs. The signal correlation plot, which only shows data when biological replicates are present in the study, uses either a red-green or a red-blue color scheme to indicate the correlation in CT among the various samples in a sample group. You can see that the correlation is very high among all of our brain samples. However, heart shows a good bit of variation in signal. Note that you can mouse over, say, samples 1 and 3 and get an actual numerical measure of the correlation. As with all plots in Data Assist, users can right-click on the graph and save it as an image file, or as a JPEG, or print it. Scatter plots allow you to select any two samples within a single group, or, if no groups are assigned, any two individual samples. You can then see how the two samples' delta CTs correlate, generally speaking, across all genes. And note, the Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient R up at the top. Or, use your mouse to see the actual delta CT difference for a specific target gene. By the way, for stats fans, Pearson's product moment is mathematically described in Appendix B of the user manual. Let's look at the graphic results plot, also active only when biological groups have been assigned. First, the volcano plot, which allows you to do sample group comparisons by graphing full change versus significance. This kind of graph allows you to quickly pick out genes that exhibit large expression changes and that are also statistically significant. Just use your mouse over feature to see which dots correspond to which genes. The RQ plot is where we can visualize our fold changes, which are also represented mathematically under the Relative Quantity or Fold Change tab that we looked at earlier. Under Plot Type, you can change the way the expression bars are presented, from Relative Quantities versus Targets to Relative Quantities versus Samples. The scaling can also be altered, from either a Log Base 2 or Log Base 10 scale to a Linear scale. Finally, the heat map. You can expand or contract the view like this to make the plot bigger or smaller. Now, these can be fairly complex, so I'd encourage you to work with a biostatistician in order to make the best use of these dendrograms. Essentially, though, the plot displays hierarchical clustering of both samples and genes based on your chosen clustering method. Average, complete, or single linkage. Distances are calculated for delta CTs using either Pearson's distance or Euclidean distance. The various red and green colors represent up and down regulation, respectively, although you can also switch to a red-blue color scheme. And you can adjust which colors correlate to a particular delta CT. For more information on the heat map or any of the other plots we've looked at, there are two excellent resources to be aware of. The first is the software embedded user guide that I mentioned in the first video. The second is a journal article describing Data Assist, and it can be accessed for free on the web. Just Google Data Assist and one or two author names, and you'll find it. The last thing we want to do is export our data. This part's easy. Just go to File, Export. A pop up window offers several choices. For example, you can choose to uncheck any data that you don't want included in the final report, and you can choose from a variety of delivery options and export file types. Once you've chosen a destination site on your computer, just click Export. And here it is. And that's all for the basics of using Data Assist to analyze large or even small to medium gene expression datasets. Thank you for joining us today. 
And remember, you can see a full list of training videos at the Life Technologies website, as well as browse the many other technical training options available, including on-site and in-house courses. Until next time, so long.